many indigenous cultures, stories are considered to be animate beings so that like, because you're creating them, they become real for the people receiving them. So then they are real. And in a lot of ways, I really did feel that with Alora Dannon, where I was like putting on her skin and was helping bring her story to life. How'd you meet my mom? Uh, we were friends, me and your mom. I mean, uh, I don't think I can remember the first you know, moment I met her. We partied together back then, you know, it was before I quit drinking and I don't know, I just ran with that whole crowd. You know, that's how we met. So I guess I'll dive in. Um, yes. When writing this episode, I knew that Sterling Harjo wanted to pay homage to the Before Sunrise trilogy that Ethan Hawke had done in the sense of just following two people, having a conversation, like that being predominantly the, the focus of the episode of letting it breathe. And we'd never really done anything like that in, in Res Dogs before. And so there was definitely those influences that we wanted to have in this, in this dialogue. I'm assuming I wasn't planned. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's okay. No, we were probably together only four months when she told me that she was pregnant. I mean, we we were not great together, your mom and me. I mean, I, mean, I, was, I, was, I was crazy about her, really crazy, like too crazy. I probably would have gotten sick of me too. It's just, we fought all the time. We were... We were so young. I mean, fuck, we had no business having a baby. I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not an excuse. I was too young. I should have tried a lot harder. Just, I don't know, you know, and now I, 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 with these kids, you know, I got, a, I got a second chance to be a better father. You never get the first pancake right. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite line of the episode is, you, you never get the first pancake right. <laughs> um, this was the very first scene that me and Ethan filmed in, um, in the entire episode. And you see that he's smoking weed in, the, in this moment, in this scene, and he passes it to Alora. And we don't ever actually really see Alora Dan in smoke, or I think we see her do an edible in the first episode, like in the pilot, but she's like, I don't feel shit. And so she she's not somebody who we really know to be a stoner, but I think that Alora Dannon is trying to show how grown up she is to, to Rick, to her dad and how much she doesn't need him anymore. I will say when we were filming it that there was actual weed in there, but it wasn't like THC weed. It was just purely CBD weed. But like, there's definitely a placebo effect to it. Um, but in filming that, I was really happy that we had done this scene first because the CBD, like, I guess, medicinal properties of it ended up being like really relaxing for my body. And it was, I was obviously nervous to have to shoot with Ethan Hawke and have him such an iconic actor who I respect so much playing my dad. And um, to be able to have that moment where I'm like relaxing into it, having some CBD weed, um, ended up getting me more comfortable so that I was able to dive into some of the, some of the further conversations that we have in the house, in the, in the diner, in the pizza spot, like all of the, all of the different places that we go through this episode together. Um, it was helpful to start off on, on this note and to have the CBD. <laughs> I'm not comparing you to a pancake. That's not what I'm doing. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I, 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 I'm talking about you like you're not standing right in front of me. And I'm sorry. Why didn't you try to stick around? Or did you? I did uh, for a bit. I mean, it's still pretty fucked up no matter what, right? Leaving a kid? Yes, it is, definitely. Uh, I could offer you like a hundred reasons, but it it doesn't matter, you know? I mean, I'm not a perfect person, you know? I, I mean, nobody's I, saying I, you have to be perfect. It's, I don't think, I'm not saying that. No, and, and nobody has accused me of that. It's just, just, 
I don't know, he, here I am, and I got these new kids, and I've known about, I mean, I've, I've always known that you were there. I, I, I just, I don't understand why I didn't just go down there and knock on your door like you did. I mean, I could have done this a lot earlier. And now it seems so stupid and weak. Pretty weak. This is our stop. Yeah, it just ended. Um, I haven't watched this. Uh, I haven't watched this since it came out. And we didn't get a chance to talk about it because the strikes were happening. And obviously the strikes were really important. And I'm so glad that they happened. And it almost feels like we released it into a void where we didn't get to celebrate it, where we didn't get to talk about it. And yeah, just seeing this clip back, it's interesting. Like I, I feel a bit removed from Res Dogs because it's been a couple of months because we're not back on set filming like we usually are this time of year. Um, and yeah, I, I don't see myself at all in Alora Dan and I really just do see Alora, which I'm I'm really proud of. And straight following after the scene, I think there's a moment where Alora meets her siblings and there's something in her that softens. And even though she is wanting to punish Rick, that like she's wanting to hurt him and and not let him off the hook. He and he's owning up to his shit, which is which is great. And I think ends up making him a more complex character that he's not trying to defend himself. He knows he messed up and he's trying to own it. And Alora's not letting him off the hook. And it's like all of these ands and 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 in this dynamic that further complicates their relationship. And yeah, I think it's work that I'm really proud of and also thinking of that hot Oklahoma day first step filming getting to connect getting to share with getting to share with Ethan some of the inspiration behind Laura Dannon's journey as a writer also as an actor um and and getting to dive into that was something that was really special and that I'll always that I'll always cherish It was always the plan to have Ethan as Alora Dannon's father, although we didn't know what his schedule would be. That was our hope. And and I know Sterlin and, and Ethan have had a previous relationship before and he was a fan of the show. And yeah, I think when writing and shaping the season, when we were all in the brainstorming area, I had no idea that I would be writing that episode. I think that was something that I had assumed Sterling would take over. And as we get closer towards going off and writing scripts, then he would assign us each episodes. And I don't know, I think I'm always like especially passionate with certain certain storylines. Last season uh, was the Grandma Mabel episode, which Sterling ended up assigning to me, as well as this year's um, Laura's Dad episode. And yeah, it, it like there were different iterations of it and it was definitely inspired by the Before Sunrise trilogy because we had in mind who we wanted to play Rick and right. It was, it was really fun and really sweet and really complicated. There's a, experiences from my own family that were definitely steeped into that. My mom is Mohawk, both my parents are Mohawk, but my mom is Mohawk and she's mixed. Um, and she has a white father who she didn't meet until she was an adult. And she didn't know her white dad. Um, and there were other siblings that she connected with. So there were definitely personal elements in this episode that when she watched she felt incredibly emotional over and was one that like I felt very rooted to and also if you're gonna have a white dad like it might as well be Ethan Hawke <laughs> <laughs> It's totally different. It was originally supposed to be like the sixth episode of the season as opposed to the ninth. Um, there was like a lot of rejigging that happened from the time we were in the writer's room to when we were on set and with production. But yeah, I think it was, it was really fun to just get to sit and play in a scene. And I think that there were so, like with Res Dogs in the first two seasons, we would shoot every episode in four days. And the fifth season we had five days, which felt like a luxury. Um, and 
for people who know, like that's really fast. And we had minors on set, so that meant that we couldn't do full hours. And, and so with those tight production schedules, oftentimes you're like running and gunning. There's no time to second guess. There's no time to like play with the minute intricacies because we're like, we got a lot of coverage, we gotta go. We got pages to cover and ground to lay today. Um, but when it came to the episode of Alora's dad, it felt like there was so much space to just play. And I couldn't even necessarily walk you through what my all of my choices were playing Laura because I think it, there was just so much room to play and breathe where every take would be different and we would discover new things and we would like riff off of each other and and see what we could discover in in the moment of every given take and and that wasn't always something that we had the space to do on Res Dog so it felt really special and yeah, I think I, I kind of like put in my mind somewhere that I was working with Ethan Hawke somewhere else. And I was just like, I'm here working with another actor. We're diving into this. And that also felt like it provided that space and room so we could so we could really find this dynamic and this relationship. I mean, I think that was always something I dreamed for Alora and like in so many indigenous cultures, stories are considered to be animate beings. So that like, because you're creating them, they become real for the people receiving them. So then they are real. And in a lot of ways, I really did feel that with Alora Dannon, where I was like putting on her skin and was helping bring her story to life. And like, I'm not the most spiritual person. I'm not like into woo stuff per se, but there was something that did feel spiritual about being able to bring this character into the world and so much so that I would like every season I would pray for her I would actually like hope and pray that she would like find healing and that she and, and so those were the things that I think I prayed for for Alora Dannon as this animate being in the world now that we've yeah. given back to Indian country and I haven't had a chance to play somebody with so much growth over the course of such a long time and it's been a real privilege to be able to do that with season one Alora being caught in the aftermath of the trauma of finding Daniel and, and experiencing that loss in that way and, and learning that she has a really fraught relationship with death with how her mom passed and and then in season two getting to move through that and seeing her seeing her experience death in a really positive way in the way it's meant to be with her grandma Mabel and then getting to let go of Daniel in that way where he'll always be with her forever but that she doesn't have to cling so tightly to that pain and that grief and then in season three getting to see her heal through that and what her life looks like moving forward which is her reaching out and forming new family and forming that that sense of groundedness while also being secure enough in her relationship with the res dogs with bear that she knows she can she knows she'll be good and she could still go out go to school see a life for herself she has family at home she has that rooted sense that she's not running away to california she's not running away from something but she's just expanding on and building her life and so getting to go from that one end of the spectrum to where laura dannon ended up was like so emotional and i'm so like grateful to have been a part of that journey and and i recognize so many res girls journeys in olora dannon's and that's something that i hear from from a lot of people and when i go anywhere in indian country when i go to powwows when i like in my dms people saying how much they recognize their stories of loss and healing and moving through things with Alora, and that's just something that i'm like beyond grateful for I think that for Alora Dannon and Bear, their relationship has been complicated from day one. I think that they had always butt heads and they were struggling over who the leader was and and there were definitely like, there were kind of 
stuck in a in a cycle that wasn't necessarily the healthiest but there was always so so much love between them even in times of betrayal even when Alora left to go to California without him um and to see them come together and to say explicitly how much they love each other and that they're there for each other was something that was really important to all of us and felt like the like the perfect bookend for Reservation Dogs in them parting that they are family they always will be the rest of us.